Our first reading this morning comes from the Hebrew Scriptures, Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16, and then 20 to 24. I invite you to listen for a word from God. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the watercourses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Therefore, says the Lord God to them, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you pushed with flank and shoulder and butted at all the weak animals with your horns until you scattered them far and wide, I will save my flock and they shall no longer be ravaged and I will judge between sheep and sheep. I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I, the Lord, have spoken.
Our second reading comes from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Listen for a word from God. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. And all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me, naked, and you did not give me clothing, sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, was it, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly, I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If I were queen for a day... I have been known to say, by which I mean I would be in charge of everything. Usually the everything has to do with something work-related, the timing of a decision to coincide with necessary meetings, an inner office project completed the same time as a committee project, the plan for a Presbytery-sponsored leadership event. Other times, if I were queen for a day, is uttered in response to larger issues over which I have no control but have definite opinions. If I were queen for a day, the use of fear and threat would be banned from any political race. If I were queen for a day, candidates for any political office would concentrate on their own gifts, strengths, and ideas rather than tear down or disparage their opponents. If I were queen for a day, we'd figure out a way to use the incredible wealth that exists in this country to ensure that no person ever goes to bed hungry. Still other royal decrees involve personal things. If I were queen for a day, my husband Nick would have a job in Cleveland. If I were queen for a day, my husband Nick would have a job in Cleveland. If I were queen for a day, my husband Nick would have a job in Cleveland. <laughs> Essentially, that's my only personal royal decree. No doubt you have your own royal decrees. As a country founded on running away from the monarchy as quickly as possible, the whole notion of queens and kings is not our everyday experience. Although we know kings and queens, we're fascinated with the British monarchy. I have friends, 
who set their alarm clocks for ungodly hours so they could watch the live telecast of both William and Kate's and Harry and Meghan's weddings. We want to know what they've named their children and ooh and ah over the pictures. Any Netflix or Amazon or BBC show about royalty captures our attention. And so while we are intrigued with the monarchy, the influence of a monarchy on our daily basis is not a part of our experience, which brings us to today and the liturgical designation. This is Christ the King Sunday, the last Sunday of the Christian year. Next Sunday, if you've been keeping track, is the first Sunday of Advent. As the last Sunday of the Christian year, Christ the King Sunday is the conclusion of the church's liturgical journey through the life of Jesus and the gospel message. Its purpose is to celebrate the coming reign of Christ as King of the earth and his completion of the renewed creation that marks the fullness of the kingdom of God. That hope is born from the entire life of Jesus and his teachings that have been celebrated in the seasons of the church year during the past 12 months. In celebrating the reign of Christ the King, this Sunday also provides an appropriate bridge to the new church year that begins next Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent, with its emphasis on hope and expectation, the longing for the coming of the kingdom of God amid the darkness of a sinful world. The decree Jesus proclaims in this morning's gospel reading does not necessarily fit with what we might imagine a royal decree would sound like. In today's reading, the Son of Man returns in his glory and sits on the throne of his glory. He calls the nations together and pronounces blessings and punishments. The basis for each is dependent upon the ways the people have treated others, those poorest and most vulnerable in their midst. The scripture right before this story is the parable of the master who went away, but before leaving gave money to three slaves. One got five talents, one two, and one one. The five and two risked, the one played it safe. Blessing was given to the two who took chances. All was taken away from the one who played it safe. It is no accident that this story of the accounting of the nations comes on the heels of that parable. Blessings and judgment is pronounced on the slaves, those who trusted and the one who didn't, those with faith and the one without, those who employed their imaginations and the one who didn't, those who took a risk and the one who played it safe. Trust, faith, imagination, risk, all evidence of faithful disciples. And then, in the next breath, Jesus holds up another action of faithful discipleship. This is what it looks like when trust, faith, imagination, and risk are put into practice. It is not enough to say we have trust in God, have faith, plan to use our imagination, and are willing to take risks. The question is, how do we act on it? How do we live it? How do we show others that this is real in our own lives? Lip service to a statement of belief just doesn't cut it. And so when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. 
and he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. I read this passage and I want to be a sheep. Don't you want to be a sheep? Who doesn't want to be the one that feeds the hungry and gives the thirsty drink and welcomes the stranger and clothes the naked and cares for the sick and visits the prisoner? You know, we can print out checklists. Or better yet, someone has to design the Matthew 25 app. It'll be right here on our phones. And every time we feed and give and welcome and clothe and care and visit, we can mark it off. Sort of like counting our steps. Always keep my phone in my pocket when I'm walking so I know how far I've walked. We can count our good deeds. Ooh. But you know, that's not what this passage is about. This passage is about a way of life, an orientation towards those around us, a sense of community and relationship, an awareness of what life conditions are outside of this building. The sheep and goats are addressed as a group, not as individuals. And so while single acts by single people are worthwhile, it is the calling of the community that is highlighted here, a calling that practices the ministry of compassion. And how is that call acted upon? First off, there must be a realization on the part of the community that it is to this type of ministry that you are called. You realize what I did there, right? I shifted from community in general to you. Those of you in this place, sitting in this sanctuary, you as community here. This ministry of compassion is what you are called to, and the realization that this is true for you involves an embracing of that call. It's not that it is just a good idea or a nod as the scripture is being read, oh yes, oh yes, that's a good thing for us to do. It has to go from here to here, from our heads to our hearts. It has to move from something we think about to something we do. It has to be belief put into action. And I believe there are at least two characteristics that make this realization a reality. The first is the strength of relationships. For better or worse, God has given you to one another. You are the Presbyterian Christian witness on this particular spot on public square at this particular time. And so how do you nurture your relationships with one another? And I'm not meaning that you all are each other's best friends. What I do wonder is, how do you value, appreciate, and encourage one another as you live as disciples? When you are together, do you recognize the other as a sister or brother in Christ, as one created in the image of God, as one for whom Jesus died? Seeing one another in this light shapes the tone and direction of conversation and interaction. Seeing one another as a brother or sister in Christ, as a child created in the image of God, as one for whom Jesus died, means you are more than just some casual acquaintance or friend, even. You are spiritually connected to one another. How will you, in this time of transition, strengthen and nurture your spiritual connection? And for the second, also, what's going on out there, out there in public square? What are the hurts and longings for those who pass by this building? Who is the hungry and the thirsty? Who is the stranger? Who is in need of clothing and healing? Who is the prisoner? Where are they? Who are they? The only way to know is to go looking for them. You are not a religious community for your own sake. 
You are a religious community for God's sake. And God calls you to a ministry of compassion for those poorest and most vulnerable in your midst. A ministry of compassion embraced by a community that takes the strength and nurture of its own relationships seriously. A ministry of compassion embraced by a community aware of the hurts and longings of its neighborhood. So today is Christ the King Sunday. Next Sunday is Advent. We start the liturgical year all over again. But in this instance, Jesus just isn't king for today. Jesus is king of our lives. And this is his royal decree. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to subscribe to get the latest and greatest videos from the Old Stone Church. And if you feel blessed by our message, please go to the oldstonechurch.org and click donate. God bless you today and forever. The Old Stone Church. We've been loving Christ and serving city since 1820.